The putting out system is a means of subcontracting work. Historically, it was also known as the workshop system and the domestic system. In putting out, work is contracted by a central agent to subcontractors who complete the work in off-site facilities, either in their own homes or in workshops with multiple craftsmen. It was used in the English and American textile industries, in shoemaking, lock-making trades, and making parts for small firearms from the Industrial Revolution until the mid-19th century. However, after the invention of the sewing machine in 1846, the system lingered on for the making of ready-made men's clothing. The domestic system was suited to pre-urban times because workers did not have to travel from home to work, which was quite impracticable due to the state of roads and footpaths and members of the household spent many hours in farm or household tasks. Early factory owners sometimes had to build dormitories to house workers, especially girls and women. Putting out workers had some flexibility to balance farm and household chores with the putting out work, this being especially important in winter. The development of this trend is often considered to be a form of proto-industrialization, and remained prominent until the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century. At that point, it underwent name and geographical changes. However, bar some technological advancements, the putting out system has not changed in essential practice. Contemporary examples can be found in China, India, and South America, and are not limited to the textiles industry. Topic. Firearms Historian David A. Hounshall writes, in 1854, the British obtained their military small arms through a system of contracting with private manufacturers located principally in the Birmingham and London areas. Although significant variation occurred, almost all of the contractors manufactured parts or fitted them through a highly decentralized, putting out process using small workshops and highly skilled labor. In small arms making as in lock production, the workshop system, rather than the factory system, was the rule. All of the processes were carried out under different cottage roofs. It was replaced by inside contracting and the factory system. Topic: <inaudible> European cloth and other trades. The domestic system was a popular system of cloth production in Europe. It was also used in various other industries, including the manufacture of wrought iron ironware such as pins, pots, and pans for ironmongers. It existed as early as the 15th century, but was most prominent in the 17th and 18th centuries. It served as a way for capitalists and workers to bypass the guild system, which was thought to be cumbersome and inflexible. Workers would work from home, manufacturing individual articles from raw materials, then bring them to a central place of business, such as a marketplace or a larger town, to be assembled and sold. The raw materials were often provided by the merchant, who received the finished product, hence the synonymous term putting out system. The advantages of this system were that workers involved could work at their own speed while at home, and children working in the system were better treated than they would have been in the factory system, although the homes were polluted by the toxins from the raw materials. As the woman of a family usually worked at home, someone was often there to look after any children. The domestic system is often cited as one of the causes of the rise of the nuclear family in Europe, as the large amount of profits gained by common people made them less dependent on their extended family. These considerable sums of money also led to a much wealthier peasantry with more furniture, higher quality food, and better clothing than they had had before. It was mostly centralized in Western Europe and did not take a strong hold in Eastern Europe. Of course, the acquisition of profit largely depended on which part of the putting out system one was associated with. If one was a worker in the London textiles industry, for example, the cost of hiring sewing equipment and purchasing thread often precluded the worker from eating on a regular basis. 
Likewise, the 14 hour days led to many untimely deaths. Thomas Hood's poem The Song of the Shirt 1843 describes the wretched life of a woman in Lambeth laboring under such a system. It was written in honor of a Mrs. Biddle, a Lambeth widow and seamstress living in wretched conditions. In what was, at that time, common practice, Mrs. Biddle sewed trousers and shirts in her home using materials given to her by her employer, for which she was forced to give a £2 deposit. In a desperate attempt to feed her starving infants, Mrs. Biddle pawned the clothing she had made, thus accruing a debt she could not pay. Mrs. Biddle, whose first name has not been recorded, was sent to a workhouse, and her ultimate fate is unknown. However, her story became a catalyst for those who actively opposed the wretched conditions of England's working poor, who often spent seven days a week laboring under inhuman conditions, barely managing to survive and with no prospect for relief. Anders Johnson (1816–1890) was a famous Swedish entrepreneur who continued a putting out business at Holsjunga. He contracted up to 200 domestic workers, who came to his house to get the raw material and returned after a couple of weeks with textiles, that local peddlers from the city of Boras then bought and went out to sell among other things around Sweden and Norway. Topic. Cottage industry A cottage industry is a small-scale industry, where the creation of products and services is home-based, rather than factory-based. While products and services made by cottage industries are often unique and distinctive, given that they are mostly not mass-produced, producers in this sector often face manifold afterdeals when they are without the backing of the government or when latter is in favor of large-scale industrialization, and hence is the lesser popularity of such industry in the latter-day world. A cottage industry is an industry—primarily manufacturing which includes many producers, working from their homes, typically part-time. The term originally referred to home workers who were engaged in a task such as sewing, lace making, wall hangings, electronics, or household manufacturing. Some industries which are usually operated from large, centralized factories were cottage industries before the Industrial Revolution. Business operators would travel around the world, buying raw materials, delivering them to people who would work on them, and then collecting the finished goods to sell, or typically to ship to another market. One of the factors which allowed the Industrial Revolution to take place in Western Europe was the presence of these business people who had the ability to expand the scale of their operations. Cottage industries were very common in the time when a large proportion of the population was engaged in agriculture, because the farmers and their families often had both the time and the desire to earn additional income during the part of the year winter, when there was little work to do farming or selling produce by the farm's roadside. Topic. See also. Dorset Buttony Factory system Homeworker Inside contracting Peace rate list Tanya – Japanese putting out system